We are on the island of Penang in the country of Malaysia. The city of Georgetown has a lot to offer. Let's show you around a little bit. We're Cindy and Eddie, and this is Squeeze the Day. This is the entrance to Tosun Cafe. It's one of the popular breakfast destinations they have here in town. But that's not where we're gonna have breakfast this morning. We have another plan. We're gonna show you where we're headed next. Conveniently located within feet of the entrance to Campbell Street Market, it makes it really easy to find this location. If you wanna try something new and different, turn right and continue up the street until you reach Chow Rasta. And the reason is because they have a really awesome breakfast spot and we're gonna take you there now turn into this area and they have a lot of amazing food choices let's show you a couple of them our coffee has arrived thank you if you ask for it black it comes with sugar we usually get it black without sugar today they put sugar in there which is fine we can drink it that way Good. But if you don't want sugar, just let them know. Here's what the breakfast looks like with the egg and toast. Just so you have a heads up, also they put sugar on the toast as well. This is how your breakfast comes. I like to have my eggs cooked just a little bit more. They did that for me. Cindy and I like to eat these slightly differently. Whereas I eat mine with a spoon. She likes to put her egg on the bread. You'll find tons of different food and beverage choices. So if you wanted to try something new, the prices here are pretty amazing. You can try something new without breaking the bank. And it's basically one large eating area. We decided to go towards the back to get away from the noise. I would recommend if you want to see a little bit of a show, come sit at one of these tables because this gentleman right here has some awesome food that he just makes consistently. It's really good. If you see behind us, it's not very busy. We were here over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday and it was packed and there was so much more being sold and more people here buying. It's calmer during the week. We're going to enjoy some of the market right now before we head off to explore the rest of the city. That's the first of the many street art that we're going to be showing you today. The Lovers on Bicycle. I think it looks like me and Eddie, doesn't it? We're going to leave the market and head over towards this building right here. That's the observatory that you can see up there. It's a very popular tourist attraction. If you come here, it's easy to find. Just follow the tall building right in the middle. This is also a good location if you're gonna be walking around exploring the city. Since it is a central hub, it's a good way to keep your coordinates. Our objective today is to be able to go and find a whole bunch of interesting murals and street art around the UNESCO Heritage City, Georgetown. And we're going to be showing you our trip as we do it. Georgetown is known for its street art for good reasons. As you can see by the examples we are showing you now. This right here is called Graffiti Alley. I'm gonna show you what kind of graffiti you'll find here. While we were in Graffiti Alley, we didn't come across any other tourists. So this might be a little less popular location. However, it is still pretty amazing to see the artwork here. That was the mural we just showed you. Some of the murals that we're finding, like this one here, is really weathered and you can barely make out what it is unless you get up really close to it. Hello. There's the cat butterfly. Don't forget to check out this cat bicycle. That's pretty sweet. Street art is everywhere and some of it is just so amazing. We made it over to Cannon Street and what we're seeing is how amazing it is. There's a lot of murals, but the whole street itself is pretty beautiful. We recommend finding it for yourself and taking a little tour. I think there's a cat lover around here somewhere. Apparently this street is so popular they actually run tours through here. Might be something worth considering for yourself. In addition to some really adorable artwork, they have some really fun stores to shop in.
Personally, I think the best part of this street is the art, but there is a lot of things to do here. If you want to get a rickshaw ride, they sure have a lot of them available for you. This is one of the more popular tourist areas. You can tell by how many people are walking around right now. We feel kind of blessed that we've been able to get the shots we were able to get without a whole lot of people in that. street more. There were a couple of times that we had to wait in line to be able to get the shots we wanted to get, but everyone was very friendly. And you can tell that there were a lot of souvenir shops and this town was geared towards supporting the tourist population. So if you want to visit a really cool tourist destination, we recommend this town. And the iconic it's on a bicycle. Siesta time. This is the iconic postcard shop. Don't miss the 35 at Jetty. Look how cool it is inside there. Even though it was harder to find, we really enjoyed walking around here because it had a more eclectic and historic feel to it. We really do love it when people are able to take old buildings that would normally be torn down and turn them into shops and cute artistic tourist destinations. Even the firemen have gotten into it with the wall arts, very cool. We want to say thank you to all of the brave firefighters around the world. It's a special person who runs towards a fire when everyone else is running away. We've been able to find a lot of this street art because it's located on Google Maps. So a simple Google Maps search or just look at the map itself will help you find these locations. We came to the corner of Pitt and King where we've discovered Little India. Everything changes on this street. It's such a different feel, but you're still in Georgetown, so that's pretty cool. One other thing that you'll notice once you get onto this street is the smell of incense. You'll have all kinds of different scents that are in the air just lingering as you walk down the street. You'll also find a lot of delicious food and Things to sample along the way. I think we're gonna get some samosas. Just grab a bag and some tongs and grab your samosa and pop it in. You need two. That's gonna be our lunch. I wanna sample all kinds of things. I don't even know where to start. Thank you. We found this right in the center of Little India, so we're kind of excited. They also have a couple of sweets if you wanted to try some Indian sweets. We pulled over to a Try out these samosas. Let's see a big chunk of egg in there. Pretty good. There's eating venues everywhere. Experiencing this little India and tasting the samosa and how incredible the food is here. We're kind of tempted to go to India. What do you think? Should we go there? Comment below. The last mural we're going to see today is actually the biggest, and it's located right here on Cheam Street. It is a big chicken. Chicken alley with this humongous rooster. Don't go too far because we've still got more of the video to show you. Check out, you can get the bike link, grab a bike to motor around town. One day pass, only six. That's not bad at all. That's about $1.50 to ride a bicycle for the whole day. Can't beat that anywhere. And now we're headed east towards the wharf and we're gonna check out a couple of jetties. Real quick, we're gonna show you the inside of this jetty food court. My camera is getting all steamed up in here. The 
jetty itself is also part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Visiting hours are 9 to 9. We're going to find out in just a minute that this part of the dock has different hours than the other part of the dock, which is actually going to say it closes at 7. So we recommend scheduling your time to leave here by 7. It also took us a couple of minutes to walk down to the end of this dock because it was so long. I think we're getting close to the end. So we are just walking on a decking that goes over the water. It goes way out into the harbor here. really was quite an amazing view from here and would be worth it to just stand and watch for a couple minutes if nothing else than to get that view. However, it was pretty windy so we didn't get any audio even though we did try to say a couple of things about the view. For the past couple of months, as we've been traveling around Southeast Asia, we have been keeping on the lookout for these buns. They are really good, and this was perfect timing for us to find the store at the end of the dock so we can enjoy a couple of them before returning to exploring the city. Now we're at the entrance to Fort Cornwallis. We saw this before we went in, but we don't see anybody, so we don't know how to pay. It reminds me of the fort we went to it in Trenton. This is where you pay, it's five ring it per person, and you just pay right here, and then you can go in and check it out. They also have what looks like to be a dining area, which is really cute. So we're gonna go in and see what we can discover about this fort. Apparently it was built over 240 years ago by the British. Feel free to grab yourself a tea or something to eat while you're here. We're gonna go on top of the wall here. Make sure you cross this bridge over the entrance that you can see down here. And this is the backside of the fort. That's the Queen Victoria Memorial. We're up on the wall and it's so wide open. That's the one railing. And then if you see, it goes over to there. That's the other railing. And this is grassy, but it's one big open wall. It's probably about 30 yards in between the walls. Pretty cool. It gave them so much room to maneuver things around that they wanted to move. They still have some of the cannons mounted. Actually, it looks like they have all of the cannons mounted. Nope. They have a bunch of them mounted. That's the first one we found that was missing its cannon. I wonder why. A lot of different food options up here. I wonder when it gets busy. That really is a nice way to make use of the space and still keep the historic feel of it. Here, you can be one of the fighting soldiers. We're not gonna do that though. So the cannons that are here were taken from pirates who invaded the monarchy of Johor, which was under the rule of the Dutch. Wow, what an amazing view. It's very specific, do not step on the cannon, so I'm not gonna do that. So this is the gunpowder magazine. This is where they kept the gunpowder safe from bombardment or theft. It's very peaceful in here. No noise from the outside world. That looks like an old entrance, but it's falling down, so I don't think they use it anymore. Some history of Fort Cornwallis. Try to give you a chance to read that without getting sun glare. 
It looks like they're still doing construction over here, so we can't see it all. If you get a chance to come and visit and this is finished, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to know what else is over here. It looks like it's gonna be really pretty once it's done. It costs 10 ringgit for the two of us to get in here. Five ringgit a piece. It's a total of $2.50 or $1.25 each. Very much worth it if it helps contribute to the completion of this amazing historical artifact. Check out this part of the restoration process. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. Stay tuned as we continue to venture through Malaysia and the rest of the world. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so that you can continue to follow along with us as we continue on this adventure. And as always, squeeze the day and be well.